Today, we take a closer look at the Ford EcoSport trend to see if it still holds a strong value proposition. Ford EcoSport first came to the Philippines back in 2014 and it was an instant success. It was one of the first subcompact crossovers which came with the benefit of higher ground clearance at the price of a sedan. However, in the course of six years, I'd be remiss to say that the EcoSport remains to be as popular as it used to be. Now, the Ford EcoSport did undergo a major revision last year, so let's see if those updates can still make it a compelling choice in this day and age. The biggest change to the exterior of the EcoSport can be found up front as it now sports a bigger grille and bigger fog lamps which gives it a more aggressive look. The side remains pretty much unchanged except for the 17-inch alloys wrapped in Michelin tires. At the back, you will still find the spare tire unlike in other markets. This was retained in order to optimize trunk space. Under the hood, the EcoSport comes with a 1.5-liter three-cylinder engine that pumps out 121 horsepower and 150 newton meters of torque. Only the top-of-the-line titanium model can be had with the 1-liter EcoBoost turbo engine. The most significant change would have to be with the transmission as the DCT or dual-clutch transmission is no longer available. All slush box variants now come with a torque converter 6-speed automatic which is actually refreshing considering inherent problems that come with DCTs. So potential buyers can rest assured that the automatic transmission on current models won't come with the headaches associated with dual clutch transmission. So stepping inside the Ford Echo Sport trend, and one of the first things you'll notice when you get in here is that you sit high up, which is really good because it gives you a commanding view of the road and excellent visibility. Plus, you get excellent thigh support, which will come in really handy during long drives. One of the things they changed for the updated EcoSport would be the dashboard. And you'll see it now comes with this 9-inch touchscreen. And what I really like about this is that it has physical buttons, which is more intuitive to use, especially when you're driving. Now, this being the trend model, you won't exactly find all the bells and whistles that you'd usually do in more premium automobiles, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. For example, the instrument cluster has an analog tachometer and analog speedometer. It only has uh, an LCD in the, in the middle, which will also display a trip timer, an odometer, and a digital speed speedometer, plus your fuel mileage. And it's so easy to use, and more importantly, it's very clear. And the same thing goes with the HVAC controls. It's not an automatic climate control system, but the buttons are very intuitive, and they're well within reach. In fact, everything is ergonomic. As far as the materials go, again, there's nothing extravagant here. But the good thing about that is everything seems very durable. And you won't find any piano black materials especially in high traffic areas which means it won't get all scratched up now the dashboard is pretty soft but you will find hard plastics on the door panels but at least all touch points are soft and comfortable as far as storage is concerned there's the usual door pockets a few cubby holes here and there of course a glove box and then the center console it has a cubby hole there but I'm not exactly sure what you could fit in here except for maybe a pack of cigarettes you also get two cup holders here at the front so let's see what it's like at the back okay so I'm here at the back seat and when you look at this vehicle from the outside you'd be thinking okay it's probably pretty cramped in there but sitting here I'm finding that there's so much space more space than I expected there's ample legroom my knees are inches away from the front seat and there's also plenty of room for your feet underneath the front seat which means that your thighs are also firmly planted here and there's a lot of headroom as well as far as toys are concerned there's not that much 
The only buttons you'll find here would be for the power windows and uh, an unlock and lock button, which means that if you're traveling with small kids, it might be a good idea to keep the child lock on. Now you also won't find a center armrest, but all the seat belts are three point ELR and it also has ISOFIX. So anyone who has driven for more than five minutes in Metro Manila would know that driving can be so toxic. And that's why it's important to get behind the wheel of something that doesn't feel like a chore to drive. And when it comes to that, the Ford EcoSport ticks all the right boxes. So part of the charm that comes with driving a crossover is the fact that you do sit up high and it feels like a car to drive, which means it's very responsive to your inputs and extremely light. So that means you can take this on long trips without getting tired. And I'm gonna go back to the sitting position. Aside from the good view, it's actually quite comfortable because your thighs rest firmly on the seats. In terms of ride comfort, it is pretty stiff, but you can only feel that during sudden dips. Over uneven roads at speed, the ride isn't actually jarring. It's, it's still quite comfortable. So let's see how this thing accelerates. I've turned traction control off to see how it launches. So the acceleration wasn't insanely quick, but I guess it was acceptable for a vehicle in this class. Power delivery was also very smooth all throughout the rev range. So as far as the driving experience is concerned, I think this crossover shines the most with two aspects. One, the steering. This, the ratio is not too quick, not too slow, it's just right. Now, it's quite light, but still, the response is pretty good. Now, couple that with the vehicle's short wheelbase, it makes for a very good drive. The second thing would be the brakes. Now, this has four-wheel disc brakes, and even when you brake hard, the car doesn't nosedive which actually makes you feel like a smoother driver than you really are. And then there's the handling. So when you look at this vehicle from the exterior, you'd think, okay, it's such a tall vehicle. It has a high center of gravity, which means it'll probably have body roll, which will kind of compromise your confidence when taking in corners. But that's not the case here because you can still take corners with confidence and the car feels really planted. So I'm not sure if you can attribute that to the wide tires that it comes with, but taking in corners is actually quite fun. Now, if you compare this to other vehicles that are similarly priced, you're going to end up looking at cars like the Honda BRV or the Toyota Rush. And I have nothing against those cars, but really they're not in the same league because those aren't exactly crossovers. The Honda BRV is really just a mobilio on stilts, while the Toyota Rush is a glorified Avanza, which means that they're not exactly going to drive the same way. But don't take my word for it. If you are in the market for a new vehicle, I suggest that you take a test drive of all the vehicles that's on your shortlist, and this should definitely be one of them. Being a mid-variant, the EcoSport trend may not have all the bells and whistles, but it definitely has everything one could ever need. Other notable features of the EcoSport are electronic brake distribution, electronic stability control, traction control, hill start and hill descent assist, and rear park assist with a rear view camera. So yes, the EcoSport has been around for a while, 
But if you want a no-frills automobile that provides convenience and is a joy to drive, then you should still seriously consider it. So is the Ford EcoSport trend still a compelling choice? Well, given its ground clearance and its car-like driving dynamics, not to mention its very competitive price, absolutely yes. Thanks for watching. If it isn't too much trouble, please subscribe and give the video a like if you feel it deserves one.